Welcome to Fox TV News, where everything is true. Three narrowly escaped serious injuries in Mandeville crash. Three people narrowly escaped serious injuries following a two-vehicle crash on the Winston Jones Highway in the vicinity of Greenville in Mandeville on Sunday. The crash involved a Toyota pickup and a Nissan AD wagon. An alleged eyewitness told reporters that shortly after 11 a.m., both vehicles were traveling westbound when the motor car was attempting to turn into Greenville. The pickup collided into the rear of the motor car. The impact resulted in the car going off-road. The occupants of both vehicles escaped injured. Miners among 13 arrested in Portland Ganja bus. The police are reporting that two miners were among 13 people taken into custody on Saturday in Portland following the seizure of approximately 600 pounds of compressed ganja. They say the illicit drug has an estimated street value of 3.3 million. The seizure was made during an operation on Long Road. The police report that about 9 a.m. Lawmen were in the air when they signaled the driver of an Isiso motor truck with passengers aboard to stop. He complied and the vehicle was searched under the Dangerous Drug Act. During the search, 600 pounds of compressed ganja were found in their possession according to the police. They were subsequently taken into custody. Their identities are being withheld pending further investigation. St. James Man charged after allegedly robbing security guard. A man has been charged with robbery with aggravation and illegal possession of a firearm after he allegedly held up a security guard at a supermarket in Montego Bay, St. James on Saturday, October 1, 2022. Charge is 51-year-old Richard Dixon, otherwise called Tony, a laborer of San Orange in St. James. Reports are that about 9 p.m., Dixon went to the supermarket where he allegedly held up a security guard at gunpoint. A tussle ensued during which three were shot were fired in June Dixon. He was then reported disarmed the security guard of his licensed firearm and ran from the supermarket. Dixon was subsequently arrested and charged after an identification parade on Friday. Portland farmer charged for allegedly stabbing his girlfriend. A man has been arrested and charged with wounding with intent after he allegedly stabbed his girlfriend all over her body in Duncan Hill, Portland on Wednesday, December 28, 2022. Charge is 28-year-old Quentin Smith, a former of Red Hustles Road, Port Antonio in Portland. Reports are that about 8.30 p.m., Smith's girlfriend went to relatives' home to pick up her child when the former showed up and started accusing her of cheating. An argument developed between them and Smith allegedly pulled a ratchet knife and started stabbing his girlfriend all over her body. The victim was taken to hospital where she was admitted and treated. Smith was arrested and charged on Saturday, January 7. Woman escapes injury after being shot at in Manchester. Head of the Mandeville Police, Superintendent Shane McCullough, has clarified an early report that said a woman was shot and injured in Daveton, Manchester on Saturday night. McCullough told reporters that the woman was shot at while driving a motor car in Daveton. Her car was fired on. She wasn't shot, he said. An earlier report from a police source had said the woman was shot and injured. However, McCullough said the woman fled from the vehicle on scarf during the attack, which happened about 8.30 p.m. Motorcyclist hospitalized following St. Elizabeth crash. A motorcyclist has been hospitalized following a collision in the south central town of Junction in St. Elizabeth on Sunday. Closed circuit television footage showed the motorcyclist colliding with a motor car that appeared to turn into his pass shortly before midday. The injured motorcyclist was taken to hospital for treatment. This latest incident follows two fatalities in the Junction Police era since the start of the year. Reporters understand that the victims are a motorcyclist and a pedestrian. The pedestrian reportedly succumbed at hospital on Saturday, a day after being mowed down in a hit and run. Returning to danger. Schools resume classes on Monday, but children in Trelawney here remain at risk almost four months after Prime Minister Andrew Holness said his government would fast track the replacement of a collapsed bridge which has spanned the Hector's River. Since the tri bridge collapsed in August 2021, school children and other residents have been using makeshift method, including a fallen tree and a zip line comprising a rope and a bucket to cross the river. Last September, Holness told the House of Representatives that he would be personally visiting the area. However, Residents have said that the Prime Minister has not honored that promise. Member of Parliament for Manchester Northwestern Michael Phillips said the government is moving too slowly in dealing with the problem following the collapse of the 125-year-old bridge. 
The Prime Minister made a commitment to come and visit the area to see what people, especially the school children and the farmers, are experiencing. The situation has gotten worse since September, Philip told reporters. More of the banking has washed away. The river itself has become even more difficult to cross, even when it is not in space, he added. The risky makeshift footbridge connects residents in the neighboring community of Courage Park in northwestern Manchester to Troy in southern Trelawney. Since the collapsed bridge, residents have had to do a 15-mile alternative commute. Like Phillips, residents and school leaders on either side of the collapsed bridge are expecting that their plight will be addressed in the upcoming financial year starting April, but are demanding speedy preparatory action. It is disappointing as to how we deal with emergencies or what it is that the Prime Minister may deem as an emergency because we have seen in other matters things being dealt with expeditiously when it matters to the powers that be, said Phillips. I am not getting the impression that after the Prime Minister answered my questions in Parliament in September that they have gone any further. If it is that they are waiting on the next financial year, then I would expect that it, the new bridge would get to the point of procurement, added Phillips. When contacted for an update on the replacement of the Troy Bridge, National Works Agency Communications Manager Stephen Shaw said only the design of the bridge was ready. We have to take the clue from the government. We have done the design and that is the last thing. The next thing would be for us to receive funding and then we move to procurement and that is what we are waiting, said Shaw. Philips, who is also opposition spokesperson on transport and works, reiterated the expense incurred by parents' force to transfer their children to school far away in Magali and Balaclava. While the bridge is not on the front burner of those who can make it happen, the residents in Manchester and in Trelawney are suffering. If you look at what has taken place at the schools, the students have been transferred to other schools, so students have to go further now to attend school than if the bridge was there, he said. It has affected commerce for many people living on both sides, Trelawney and Manchester. The teachers who can't transfer, as easy as the students, are still suffering. I asked the Prime Minister and the Minister of Education, Favour Williams, some time ago in Parliament, if there's any room or possibility for them to assist the teachers in that extra travelling that they have to go to school. Nothing has been communicated since then, he added. Phillips claimed the Minister has been so slow on finding an option for students to get home that parents felt more confident in transferring their children to other schools and paying more. However, acting principal at Troy Primary, Kerisha McIntosh told reporters that at least one family has had to resort to their child using the makeshift bridge. Things remain the same. Nothing has changed. Most of the children left and have gone to other schools as they aren't able to cross the bridge. We still have a few students attending the school I know one is returning based on financial situation. The parents had no choice than to send back the child because the child had to go so far for school, she said. She too is hopeful that the trial bridge is up for consideration in the government's next budget. Principal at current Brim Early Childhood Institution located in Troy, Pauline Brown, is also hopeful but maintains that the footbridge should be installed until the trial bridge is replaced. If they had gotten the footbridge, then at least the farmers would have a chance to walk across and people work in Troy and Christiana, that they live across the bridge, could also walk across and come in Troy to get a vehicle, she said. I think they the government should tell people what their plans are for them, if they are going to give them the bridge or if they are going to give them a footbridge. They need something concrete to go on, because this has been so long and it is time now that the people get something tangible from the government, she added. Phillips said he reminded wholeness of the commitment to visit the area during the handing over of two social houses last month in the constituency. He wholeness made another promise that he will still come, but we are months away from his initial commitment and we are now in 2023 and we are no further, said Phillips. Joseph Bromfield, a resident of Courage Park, was also disappointed. I'll know him wholeness, no come here no. We are not hearing anything. He's coming like we just in a one jungle or the desert. The people in makeshift era to cross river, getting steeper and steeper to step down. It really bad. They need to do better for us. After we're no well animal, she said. Bromfield's two sons attend Troy High and are in danger when crossing the river on the makeshift footbridge. It is the same old story because when the real fall them have to go travel on 15 mile road with the teacher. It is a good thing he the teacher is living next door to me and he's a good gentleman so he help me out good when the rain fall, 
but when the time is dry, they have to cross, she said. Last June, a 14-year-old student had a near-death experience when he fell in the river and almost drowned. He was rescued by his father. Bromfield pointed out that the residents are at a loss. We are missing out on a lot of things because we cannot cross or do business in Troy and Christiana. Before, it would only cost us $600 to go and come. We still have to be traveling around this long route and things get expensive. Every time we travel now is over $3,000 and that is only for one person, she said. It is a terrible situation. Them just can't leave us like this, like when no nobody. Treat me like I would Afghanistan. It no pretty, she said. We have people who that come look for us and sometimes would get goodies. We can't get it because them people not taking this long road, she added. Bromfield said that farmers are suffering. We now get no price for the yam them. It is a difficult situation. It is very terrible, she said. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, and click the